Greetings to all the learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is state and market. This topic is of great use for the learners from the discipline of political science, governance studies, international relations, market studies, public policy analysis amongst others. In this lecture, we shall attempt to understand the role of the state with special reference to state and market dynamics by focusing on important perspectives and theories of state, namely the classical liberal theory, positive liberal perspective, Marxist perspective, libertarian theory. In this lecture, we shall try to explain the key ideas, important text associated with each perspective to elaborate on how the state and looking at the bigger picture of the space that market dynamics have with reference to the working of the state. This lecture shall also present to all the learners the insights on dynamics of working of the state and the market and most important focusing on the changes that have been brought in because of globalization. To begin with, let us understand the concept of the state and for that, we take reference to popular definitions presented by various political and other theorists. The Greek political philosopher, political scientist Aristotle defined state, he looked upon state as a union of families and villages having for its end a perfect and self-sufficing life by which that is, it meant a happy and honorable life. Further, according to Burgess, state can be defined as a particular portion of mankind viewed as an organized unit. Another definition presented by Sidwick, state is a combination or association of persons in form of government and governed and unified together into a politically organized people of a definite territory. Another very important definition by Garner that is state is a community of people occupying a definite form of territory free of external control and possessing an organized government to which people show habitual obedience. Professor Lasky defines state as and we quote his definition that is state as a territorial society divided into government and subjects whose relationships are determined by the exercise of supreme coercive power. Now all these various definitions present to us some very important insights as to what is a state. To elaborate further on it, we take the classical liberal perspective. Or classical liberal perspective is often called as negative liberalism. It is often defined as theory of laissez-faire individualism. As we try to understand classical liberal perspective, the work of Bentham, J.S. Mill's utilitarianism, Herbert Spencer's idea of survival of the fittest doctrine, Paine's doctrine of state as a necessary evil and most important when we try to understand the classical liberal perspective from the point of view of market, the work of Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Thomas Robert Malthus are of great significance. To elaborate further on what is the idea of state with focus to its relationship with the market from the classical liberal perspective, the negative liberal perspective or laissez-faire individualistic perspective, we take reference to the very important work by the Scottish philosopher and economist Adam Smith. He published the book, Enquire, An Enquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations. Now, this work was critical of government intervention in the economy. This work is also very important because it provided a blueprint 
for the working of free markets. It gave an idea into the operation of free trade. Adam Smith describes free market as an obvious and simple system of natural liberty. Adam Smith also published the wealth of nations. Now, in this work, what is essential here is how he points out that the earlier existing mercantilist system was self-defeating. It resulted from monopolizing spirit of the merchants and the manufacturers. To quote from this work, that to achieve economic growth as well as social betterment, let the free market mechanism operate on its own without government intervention. Adam Smith advocated a limited role for the government, but he recognized significant areas where it could act effectively. Once again, quoting from very important argument pointed out in the book, an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, 1776. It is pointed out, and as we quote from this work, it is not from benevolence that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own self-interest. That is, in the atmosphere of free domestic and international trade, Adam Smith argues division of labor leads to way for prosperity. He focuses on describing this division and the market processes that allow and enhance it. Adam Smith saw that the first duty of the government was to protect the nation, to secure the country from invasion. He argued that permanent military force rather than was necessary to defend any advanced society. He also supported an independent court system and administration of justice to control crime and protect private property. Once again, quoting from some important insights from the Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, Adam Smith favored public works to create and maintain an infrastructure, to promote free flow of e commerce, and this works included such as roads, bridges, canals, harbors, uh, postal system that profit seeking individual may not be able to efficiently build and operate. Adam Smith's free market mechanism believed that once governments emerge, they end oppressive mercantilist policies. So, therefore, dear learners, to understand the role of state with reference to market. From the negative liberal perspective, the classical liberal perspective, the laissez-faire individualist perspective, that is, there is a belief in inalienable natural rights of individuals, life, liberty, property. Sphere of individual action defined and demarcated in political and economic activity. Individual liberty in this aspect was seen as absence of interference from state or external regulation. Quite often it has been connotated as negative liberty. Another important work as we try to understand the classical liberal perspective is that of the is that by, by John Locke. In his, some of his important works, Two Treatise of Civil Government, 1690, some considerations of the consequences of the lowering of interest, raising the value of money, 1692 amongst others. Now, he gave great foundational contribution to classical liberalism in his exploration with reference to the natural rights theory. Uh, in terms of searching for the basis and importance of rights led him you know, to, be an expo you know, to, to be an exponent of natural law, provided the principle that political sovereignty comes only from the consent of the governed. Further, physiocrats that arose in response to the French mercantilism best personified by Louis XIV's controller general of France, Jean-Baptiste Colbert, Colbertism included emphasizing planned industry to the neglect of agriculture. The physiocrats proposed lifting trade restrictions, focusing on agriculture, 
reducing old taxes to single rent tax amongst others. Frank Weiss constraint in Tableau's economics, you know, it marks the movement beginning and describing the circular flow of money and interdependency of different markets. Further, in order to understand how state needs to be seen, we take reference to the positive liberal perspective often called as welfare liberalism. Here in individual liberty does not just mean absence of interference. Individual liberty cannot be seen in terms of absence of external regulation. Liberty is seen in a, in a bigger picture that is liberty is something needed for, as a condition of self-development. Further, relationship between liberty and equality and economic freedom needs to be balanced. So therefore, the state market dynamics are seen in a different lens by the positive liberal perspective. State is an agency of common or public good and welfare. The, so, what we see here is there is a contrast. The Austrian school of economists, they extol the virtues of laissez-faire economics. The role of state from the negative liberal perspective, the classical liberal perspective was limited and market had a bigger say. In contrast, the social liberals, for example, if we say the founder of the modern welfare state, uh, William Beveridge, believe that the most vulnerable within the society require great degree of state support, state assistance. Isaiah Berlin, uh, in his very important work in 1969, argued that positive liberty enables individuals to take control of their life. The liberal theorist T. H. Green also pointed out that laws alone cannot make people good, but they can at least enable individuals to make themselves good. As we try to understand the positive liberal perspective with reference to state and market dynamics, an important work by the British political scientist Harold Joseph Lasky, his important books Authority in the Modern State 1919. The Foundations of Sovereignties and Other Essays, 1921. Now, this, these works are critical of the notion of an all-powerful sovereign state. It rather argues for a perspective that is very close to political pluralism. That is, no doubt state is an important actor, but we cannot also ignore the presence of other actors, other community groups, other associational groups in societies. He, uh, Professor Lasky's work points out arguments that reflect that how economic difficulties of capitalism might lead to issues, lot of problems for political democracy. And uh, the work often says that socialism can be seen as an available and pos uh, positive pos uh, possible alternative. So therefore, the positive liberal perspective tries to redefine the negative classical variant where in state market dynamics need to be balanced looking at the bigger picture of welfare, looking at the bigger aspect of care for the marginalized. Now as we are trying to understand state's uh, perspective with reference to important focus on its space with market. In the governance realm we also take reference to Marxist theory then. The Marxist theory or Marxist perspective challenges basic concepts of the liberal state. It challenges the basic assumptions of the liberal theory. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in their work called the Communist Manifesto point out that the executive of the modern state is but a committee for managing the common affairs of the whole bourgeoisie. So therefore, Looking at the bigger structural phenomenon with the sense of economic aspects namely that is origin with reference to origin of the states, the work of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels somewhere does not uh, believe in the idea of social contract theory that state is a result of a contract between, between individuals in the state of nature in order to establish an authority, they give up some of their rights. Rather, the Marxist perspective looks at origin of state from the 
mercantile stand standpoint influence of material conditions which they look at with reference to the economic conditions so as the work points out that as soon as there was property there were two definite classes that is one that was the owner of property and other that was without property friedrich regnels in his work the origin of family private property and state points out that state by no means is a power forged on society from without rather as the work says and we quote state is a product of society at a certain stage of development so therefore the instrumentalist model as uh, contrasted with the liberal perspective the positive liberal perspective the instrumentalist model in the work of marx and engels points out that the state was created to safeguard the economic interest and it was converted into an instrument used by the owners of property in communist manifesto karl marx and engels they point out that political power properly so called is merely the organized power of one class for oppressing another now as we are trying to understand various perspectives of the state with reference to the space of the market also we must draw a distinction what we see here is that the liberal and the conservative theories of the state tend to perceive the state they try to see the state as a neutral entity separated from society and the economy in contrast to that the marxist theory sees the state as a partisan instrument that primarily serves the interests of the dominant economic class now as we are trying to understand various perspectives of the state and also looking at the dynamics of the market the neo liberalism often called as libertarian perspective is very important the libertarian perspective is often seen as a modern alternative of classical economic liberalism this perspective the neo liberal perspective or the libertarian perspective points out the self regulating capacity of the market and correlatively the need to restrict the scope of action of the state i mean a very important work where we as we try to understand the libertarian perspective is that of robert nozick renowned american philosopher with his 1974 book anarchy state and utopia libertarianism is a political philosophy holding that the role of state in society ought to be severely limited confined especially to protection maintenance of law and order national defense administration of courts of law amongst others it points out the benefits of market competition the inherent mechanisms inclining state bureaucracies towards inefficiency and somewhere it points out that the poor record of the government attempts to the looking at the context of that time with respect to specific problems like poverty pollution amongst others and a very important philosophical argument that is the reason to advocate a libertarian society is simply is that such advocacy follows for for kind of comes you know if you read the work of robert nozick it points out that there is a serious respect for individual rights when we look at the benefits of the market competition so therefore the libertarian perspective as we see it tries to restrict the role of the state tries to point towards the need to uh, have greater respect for individual rights more respect for efficient governance by looking at the benefits of market competition thomas sel friedman as we you know he divides the theory of global the history of globalization into three periods namely globalization 1.0 to 1800 followed by globalization 2.0 to 1800 to 2000 and globalization uh, 3.0 that was a 21st century phenomena the to the, the time of era of the year 2000 now presently when we look at the history of globalization when we look at the important inputs from the world economic forum we are in the era of globalization 4.0 globalization we all know it is about growing into dependence of world's economies cultures population there are several causes of globalization namely cross border trade in goods and services 
technology, flow of investment, people and information. Now, as we are trying to understand state and market dynamics, the process of globalization is indeed a very significant one because this process of globalization marked by interdependence of world's economies, population, uh, exchange of goods and services, diversity in the nature of trade has redefined the context of working of the space or of the state and market. It has redefined the spheres wherein state and market can work in. But at the same time, critics point out that global marketplace in itself is not a level playing field. Now, this absence of parity leads to major challenges with respect to the state market dynamics in the contemporary phase. Let's take reference to a very important work by uh, Marzina Muzaffo, uh, Entrepreneurial State Debunking Public versus Private Sector Myths. Now, in, now, as we look at some of the important work by Mariana Muscafo, that is the uh, very important work from Howard Business Review, an entrepreneurial society needs an entrepreneurial state. Now, this work situated in the contemporary times points out that the challenge is to go beyond the wrong narratives and the you know tried ideological debates about whether the state should step up or step back. The real question is to apply the lessons of successful mission oriented policy in the past to the important challenges and as uh, important challenges of today both as a basis for addressing these important challenges and as a stimulus of and a direction for inclusive, sustainable, innovation-led gr growth, uh, led growth. So, what we see here is the, the important work uh, uh, Mariana Muzakato points out that an entrepreneurial society needs an entrepreneurial state. So, what we see here is that today, the dynamics of state and market, the spheres have indeed undergone change and it demands changes on part of both the state, the market as well as society. Mariana Muzakato also points out in this work an entrepreneurial society needs an entrepreneurial state and this work we quote is from Howard Business Review that is roots and directions. That is we have to find democratically ways of enduring to choose particular missions and set the routes and directions for change organizations. That is, how can we build learning organization in the public sector that can welcome risk, learn from failure, discover and explore? For the new dynamics, assessment tools are needed based on a much richer understanding of public value creation. So, dear learners, we hope that the lecture on state and market presented to you significant inputs with respect to various perspectives and theories of the state. It apprised you that how the dynamics of state and market interface with reference to governance and policy are witnessing change. There is a need for on part of both state, market as well as society to cater to the issue of welfare, public concern in a holistic and comprehensive realm. We look forward to positive, encouraging feedback from you all. Thank you very much.